Good morning to those of you here with us in Provence, France. Good afternoon, good evening, and in some cases, very early morning to those of you joining us from ITER member countries around the world. My name is Laban Koblenz, and I am the head of communication here at the ITER project. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to this first, less formal segment of today's broadcast, in which we will be celebrating the start of machine assembly, a new phase at ITER. We will spend the next hour showing you the ITER worksite. Then at 11 a.m. France time, we will start the formal ceremony where we will be joined virtually by French President Emmanuel Macron and leaders from the seven ITER members. Following the ceremony, at about 12.30, we will hold a press conference, part live, part virtual, in which you are also welcome to join us and to view this with us. To kick off the worksite tour, I now send you to Dr. Bernard Bigot, the ITER Director General, who will give you an overview of the ITER worksite. As ITER Organization Director General, I am very pleased to welcome you on the ITER site when we are just starting to celebrate for the new phase for Tokamak Assembly. We are around okay, this uh, very nice Provence landscape and in front of us indeed we have what we call the Tokamak building, the Tokamak complex indeed, which is now completed. And behind you have the assembling hall where we are pre-assembling the various components before their installation. We are very pleased that the Tokamak building has been completed and uh, we take over uh, last March. And now we are ready for assembling all the pieces in, including very recently we have installed the Tokamak okay, masterpiece, which is what we call the cryostat base. On the other side, you see the uh, okay, cryogenic plants, which also is very well progressing. You have all the okay, switchyard installation and uh, all the power distribution. And just in front of us, it is a converting okay, building where we will convert the AC to DC power. So, welcome, and we will visit now more detail of the uh, work site. Welcome to the polyidol field coil workshop, where the European Domestic Agencies is manufacturing four of the six horizontal coils we need to have the magnetic cages to be assembled. These coils, indeed, are made of, of cable. You have a sample of this cable. The cable is made of superconducting materials. This filament, made of, of titanium nobium, okay, you have inserted them in a jacket because they are fragile. They are in ceramics and they will not be able to sustain the huge magnetic forces. So this jacket is a stainless steel jacket, very heavy indeed, and inside you have a pipe where the liquid okay, helium will flow to cool down this superconducting material at minus 270 degrees in order to have it superconducting and able to transport up to 70,000 ampere of electricity. Let me explain to you okay, these coils. As I said, we have six of these coils. The smallest one are 10 meter diameters and are small enough to be transported. They are manufacturers in China, in behalf of Europe, and in Russia. The largest one, 17 and 24 meter diameters, could not be transported, and are manufacturers in this uh, workshop. How we will proceed in order to make the huge magnetic cages? We will position the three lowest coils, okay, in, uh, in the um, uh, cryostat, and we will clip okay, the 18 vertical coils, we name them toroidal coils, and we will see some of them very soon, in such a way that we have uh, associated the coil with the vacuum vessel because the sector of the vacuum vessel will be pre-assembled with the coils. And once we have positioned the nine vacuum vessel sectors with the 18 toroidal field coils, we will position the six okay, upper coils and we will weld very precisely all together the vacuum vessel sectors in such a way we have a very rigid okay, magnetic cages. 
the main challenge for ITER is the size, as you see, 24 meters large, nearly 20 meters high, with the precision, because we need to align the magnetic line very precisely. So in this workshop, you could see behind me this okay, frame, the yellow one, which will be indeed the uh, support for the impregnation of the large 24 coils, 24 meter coils. In front of us, we have the 217 coils, which are already manufactured. This one is named PF5, and it is completed just we have to uh, install the connection. And this one is a PF2, where we are still to impregnate okay, the pancake we have piled up when we have winded okay, this cable on the uh, appropriate table. And so now we are able to check, to test these coils, and we do it in the tunnel we have just behind. We will cool them down at minus 90 degrees at the temperature of the nitrogen, and so we will check that the mechanical and electrical properties are according to specification. We could not cool them at the lowest temperature of minus 270 degrees because the cryogenic plant is not yet ready. So let's move now and see the latest okay, coils on site. We just arrived a few weeks ago from China. And so you will have the full collection, the 24, which has on its way to be manufactured, the two, okay, 17 diameter coils, and very soon the one of 10 meters. So you see, all these tools have been very precisely designed and, uh, okay, manufactured in order to be able to uh, manipulate all this various equipment. I'm sure you see the tunnel, okay, we could open the tunnel, position the coils, and make, okay, the testing properly. And so, while we are progressing on this long corridor, nearly 250 meters long, we just arrive and look at what is the PF6, the number six, the smallest coil just in front of us. We just arrived from China and we and we will check it. So here it is coming from China by boat and uh, unship at Marseille Harbor. And you see we have prepared another small tunnel for the checking. And this has been qualified for this uh, mechanical and basic electrical property, but not yet with uh, the other one, which are okay, at very low temperature, as we explained. So you remember now, okay, three types of coils. The largest one still ongoing to be manufactured, which will be okay, ready when we need them in order to be able to assemble the uh, uh, toroidal field coils as well as the vacuum vessel by 2022. And this one, which are already, okay, manufacturers and uh, ready to be moved in the assembling hall. 24, 17, and 10. And when you see this one, which is already so large, you have difficulty to imagine what will be the 24 one. Very precisely and very rigid. And it will be moved on a trailer entering in the assembling hall we will visit in a few minutes from now. So, if you agree, let's move to the other workshop where we will see the toroidal field coil, which are not manufactured on site. They are small enough to be properly transported and uh, uh, assembled here. Okay, let's move.
model that's been created by Thomas Shabolik and uh, Martin Vavrik at the Hungarian Center for Energy Research. Thank you both very, very much. Tomorrow we will upload these files onto the Interpublic website so that it can be an educational tool for students and teachers from all over the world. You can build this. Yes, you can make your own tokamak in the privacy of your own home if you're a fan or in the classroom or in your maker space. And you can follow along with us during ITER assembly phase. Now your tokamak like this one will be a bit smaller than the real thing. This is exactly one one hundredth scale. So whereas the ITER tokamak is 30 meters high, 30 meters in diameter, this will be 30 centimeters high, 30 centimeters in diameter. The outer part, what I've removed here so that we can see in, is called the, the cryostat. This is manufactured in India. It is a giant thermos, uh, a stainless steel uh, chamber that will um, hold the rest of the tokamak in a vacuum and in a clean and cool environment. Then you have inside, as you can see, this donut-shaped chamber, uh, the plasma chamber called the vacuum vessel. And we have removed two segments so that you can see inside. But this will be in nine of these sectors, each one 40 degrees, to make a 360-degree vacuum vessel chamber. This is where we inject the hydrogen gas, and it is where um, we heat it until it becomes uh, a plasma, and then fusion energy can occur at 150 million degrees. So how do you contain that with the magnets? We have three magnet systems. These circular ring-shaped magnets are called the poroidal field coils. This is what Dr. Bigot was showing you on the ITER worksite. So the first of these is um, among the smallest, the, the PF5. This was procured by Europe, manufactured in China. This one on top, also quite small, being made in St. Petersburg, Russia. The rest of them are too big to make and ship, so they're being made by Europe right here on the ITER worksite. And they help to confine the plasma and to pinch it away from the walls. Second system is here in blue. These are the D-shaped or toroidal field magnets, half made in Japan, half made in Europe. There are 18 of these, and together with the six PF coils, they will create an invisible magnetic cage that keeps the superheated plasma away from the walls, from the steel walls. The third system, which also helps to create this cage, is the central solenoid, shown here in green and manufactured in the United States. Now, this one will be the, the most powerful magnet. It's manufactured in six coils. In addition to help to create the cage, it makes the magnetic flux lines go in a spiral and then in, a, in sort of a twist, and it s sends these long sustained pulses through the plasma. So just this week, we actually received the very first of the vacuum vessel segments, um, sectors from Korea with these port stubs added by uh, Russia. And this means that with the toroidal field coils that already have, have already arrived, we can start to assemble the actual ITER machine. That's why we are celebrating ITER assembly today. So there are, of course, many other pieces, more than one million components overall in the tokamak. But I hope that now you have the general understanding of how we create, use magnetic confinement to create fusion energy in a tokamak, which we hope will power the future. We now return you to Dr. Bernard Bigot on the ITER worksite. Thank you. If you could help me. Sorry. Yes, yes, please. So, we are now in the toroidal field coil workshop where we are preparing the coils which has been manufactured outside the ITER site by the domestic agencies. Indeed, you have in front of you 
two coils, which are the first two ones which will be pre-assembled with the vacuum vessel coming from Korea. They are the number 12 and 13. As you can see, is very detailed shape with a lot of interface with many other components. If you see what is there, you will see the knot, which will allow us to fit the poloidal field coils we have visited a few minutes ago. All this part will be assembled with all the components in order to make this coil a large magnetic cages, okay, very precisely positioned and able to provide all the very large magnetic field. We could move on and you could see the way it is made is not exactly the same as the other. The cable are pre-positioned on okay, a stainless plate and we will pile okay, the support and at the very end we will put them as it is with the polyidol field coil with, with the polymeric resin. And this package will be positioned in a case. The case is made of steel steel, stainless steel and you have to understand in order to contain the coils and not to break them, you have to position the external surface of the coils package, okay, of the cable package, and the internal surface of the, of the cases with a precision of 0.2 millimeter, while the length of these this, uh, coils is nearly 20 meters and 9 meters large. Very, very strict challenge, as you could imagine. Myself, I am admiring the capacity of the workers to have made these things so precisely under the specification of the engineers. It took years in order to demonstrate the feasibility of all these coils, which will be, as the PF coils, cooled down at minus 270 degrees with the liquid helium. So this is the back of the coils, or the upper part of the coils. I would like to show you now the lower part when it will be vertically dressed. Okay. And you see, you have a huge frame because we don't want to deform the coil. The coil has to be very precisely okay, uh, maintained in the shape it has. Uh, and it's why uh, there is this heavy frame which uh, will prevent any deformation. So now we are entering uh, on the part which is the lower part uh, uh, where you have the electrical connection. So again, you see the amazing shape of these coils with, for example, the part which will sit on the cryostat base in order to be able to precisely okay, fix every part and also this casing which is just uh, uh, embedding the uh, electrical connection, we will need to connect okay, these coils, 18 of them, to uh, the electrical network and with an uh, intensity of 70,000 amperes at a temperature of minus 270 degrees. And now we are preparing the last checking in order to be sure that there is no leak in the piping delivering the liquid helium. It is on site after the traveling, we are able to do that and to okay, well prepare this coil in such a way they will move to the assembling hall and be dressed up and assembled, as I will explain in a few minutes, in the okay, assembling hall with the vacuum vessel sectors. From me, is really impressive to see the quality of the work. And for example, when I see this shape here, the complexity and all is according to the strictest okay, uh, uh, specification. So let's move now to the next okay, steps where we will see the cryostat. Uh, the cryostat base is already in the pit, but okay, we need now to position what we call the 
lower cylinder and upper cylinder to assemble them together. So now we are on the work site, crossing by the upper cylinder of the cryostat. It is 30 meter diameter, nearly 10 meter high, and it has been cocooned in order to maintain a controlled humidity and temperature. It comes from India and it has been pre-assembled on the work site in the workshop we are now visiting. We need we pass by near the uh, assembling hall, the cleaning facility building, as well as the radio frequency heating system. Okay, all these pieces are necessary in order to ensure that we will have full control uh, of the hot plasma we are now preparing. So, really amazing to see this large cocooned Okay, lower cylinder and upper cylinder. Indeed, we have opened the cocooning very recently because we want to start the assembling and we need this lower cylinder to be positioned in the tokamak pit. So we just now arrive to the workshop where we have been able to manufacture the uh, cryostat component. Indeed, it comes in 54 pieces, but each of them weighting of the order of 100 tons and the size could be of the order of 10 meters. And now they have been assembled in four main pieces. The four main pieces is a base, okay, like a can, when you have a bottom of the can, and you have two cylinders, you will put one over the other, you will weld with the base, weld between these two cylinders, and after that, okay, you have a cover, a top lid. As you see in front of you, you have the lower cylinder. So it's a huge stainless steel part with a lot of opening. All this opening is in order to allow some robots to come in in the vacuum vessel as well as the cool water and the hot water we will extract and also many diagnostics. Uh, this cylinder is 30 meter diameters and we will have to fit the two pieces, okay, 30 meter diameter above the other 30 meter diameters with a precision of half a centimeter. The thickness of the stainless wall is six centimeters. And it has to be leak proof. All the welding has to demonstrate that it will not leak even with a very high vacuum. So I propose that uh, you enter within the internal okay, part or you will see the size of the cylinder all together as well as uh, okay, all the very precise penetration. This penetration has been fit together in such a way they are fully aligned with the uh, two other parts. One, it is the vacuum vessel and the other part is the bioshield wall you will visit quite soon. So very high precision and very tight okay, uh, element has to be assembled 
in such a way that you confine completely okay, the different parts uh, now. So, I guess you understand the challenge and uh, India, uh, as well as some European companies, has made a wonderful job in such a way that everything is according to specification, without any deviation so far. So, the size of the port, as I explained, is appropriate and in order to have a robot coming in, for example, in order, for example, to position the tiles which will be covering the wall of the vacuum vessel. Now, I propose to you to move and to enter into the cleaning okay, facility building. Okay, so we have to, to go around. So you see, we open the big door, a trailer will come, okay, and transport the lower cylinder. The mass is of the order of 400 tons before entering in the cleaning, okay, facility building. It's like a buffer. In this cleaning room, indeed, you will check that it is clean and uh, that there is no dust, all specifications are according to the need of the project. And before we go to the next step, which is to move them in the assembling hall. So this big door will open and uh, it will allow to have the big poloidal field coil just behind us where we have visited, the toroidal poloidal field coils which are the one visited coming from China, Japan and Italy, and this large vacuum vessel sector and, uh, okay, uh, cryostat parts. So, let's enter. So, we are now in the cleaning facility. You see the soil is very clean, electronic workshop, because we don't want any dust, any small material which could not be compatible with uh, okay, the functioning of the tokamak. So you see the size of the gantry crane, okay, able to move the different pieces and we are moving on in order to enter into the assembling hall where we will preassemble the piece and also to be able to lift them above the ground, okay, more than 30 meters high, to pass over the tokamak wall and position the component precisely okay, in the tokamak pit, in what we call the bioshield wall, this huge concrete cylinder, okay, made of, uh, okay, large concrete and, and to prevent any leak of the neutrons. So, let's move. As you understand, this various pieces has to be assembled with a very high precision is why this assembling all need to be temperature controlled. The temperature which will be 19 degrees plus or minus 0 0.1 degrees in order to avoid any okay, uh, dilatation or contraction of the various pieces from one time to the other one. This huge assembling all 100 meter long, 60 meter high, 60 meter large, is needed to accommodate the various pieces. The main points is 
this huge crane just above us, each of them could move up 750 tons and we could couple both of them in order to be able to lift up to 1,500 tons with a precision of millimeter. And very recently, we have been able to move the cryostat bays and position them within the bioshield wall, the tokamak pit, with a precision of a okay, millimeter, according to specification. So, we are moving on, and we will celebrate in a few minutes the assembling uh, events, and uh, we will be very pleased to listen to the various uh, dignitaries of the ITER members about their perception of the uh, ITER project. So I would like, before we go further, to show you something which is uh, quite uh, spectacular. They are what we call the assembling line. The critical piece of the process is to assemble, as I explained to you, the vacuum vessel sectors, nine of them, with the thermal shield, because we need to protect the coils from the hot temperature of the vacuum vessel and the toroidal field coils. We have to assemble, okay, two coils with one vacuum vessel and the thermal shield, which is appropriate. And for that, we have designed what we call assembling line. There are two assembling lines because it will take between four to six months to assemble one of these okay, vacuum vessel sectors and the coils. And we could not afford to multiply six by nine which will be 54 months, which will not be compatible with our schedule. So we have two assembling lines. These tools have been manufactured in Korea, assembled in Europe. The principle is quite simple. Think about a book, okay? And you make three package of pages of the book, okay? On the central package, you will fix the vacuum vessel sectors. On the lateral, okay, uh, package, you will fix the coils, 360 tons, as we saw a few minutes ago. And you will move the pages, okay, to close the angle. And with jacks, and you have jacks, you will adjust the positioning in the space of the coils. And you will pass the coil to the vacuum sector like a ring to the finger of a lady. The ring is 360 tons and it has to be positioned with a very high precision. It's amazing, you see, all the jacks able to position the coils in any direction as needed. And to position the coils and the vacuum vessel sector, we need to have some special tools. One of these is this uh, very large cradle, okay, where you will install in the the vacuum vessel sector, 450 tons, and you will lift up and position in very precise position, okay, in the uh, uh, assembling line. You see, it is on this support that you will have, okay, the vacuum vessel sector position and the two panel able to be closed. This is over 25 meter high, and when it will be pre-assembled with the crane, you will lift the whole pro of package and move over, over the uh, tokamak wall just in front of us in order to be able to uh, okay, position in the tokamak pit. And you see this part, for example, our mock-up made of uh, concrete in order to check and train the operators in his capacity to pre-assemble the uh, different pieces I just mentioned about. Now let's enter into the tokamak. As I explained, the tokamak has to be very clean. Is why even if it is a work site, we are protecting okay, the pieces with 
some special corridors. Thank you. And so we are moving in front of uh, what we call the tokamak pit with the bioshield wall. We just arrived. It is precisely here where we will have the plasma, 150 million degrees, okay, burning. So it is the famous bioshield wall made of concrete with all the opening which will be fitting with the opening in the cryostat and fitting with the opening in the vacuum vessel. You see it, it is now completed. And so all the pieces will come from the roof because they are so large, we could not accommodate to them to introduce them through the doors. You see already position, okay, at the bottom of the tokamak pit, the cryostat base. It is a piece which has been positioned by the end of May, and we have been successful to position them with a precision below three millimeters on any parts, okay, of the cryostat base with the support. High precision and very high quality. So you will see on the cryostat base this uh, hole, which are already drilled, where you will position the foot of the uh, polyidol, the toroidal field coil we saw a few minutes ago. So 18 of them will be positioned supporting the vacuum vessel with previously the positioning of the polyidol field coils. And you will see at the bottom, we have these uh, holes, which are what we call the feeder, okay, which will be the, the line in order to, uh, to feed the coils with the 70,000 ampere I was speaking about. So let's imagine by end of 2025, when we will have pre-assembled and assembled all the component, made the checking and testing of the vacuum vessel capacity and the coils of the magnetic field, we will start to have a first plasma. After that, we will need to complement this uh, um, facility with uh, the equipment needed to collect okay, the energy, the famous neutron and helium, and we will offer by early 2029 the first possibility to the physicist to play with the machine and have a real physics experiment. It will not be the full fusion power because we still would need some extra heating, but it will be really a major stop ahead. And after that, some extra heating will be installed. And finally, the recycling plant in order to recycle the fuels, because as I explained already, in the vacuum vessel, you will have only two grams of fuels. 1% of these two grams will fuse producing a lot of power, 500 megawatt of heating, while you feed in only 50 megawatt. So the yield is 10 times larger. And so when you will have this fusion, you need to extract the helium and to recycle okay, the, fuel, the fuel. So once all these various components will be installed, we will be ready for full fusion power and the schedule is by okay, end of 2035. It could seem long for you, but you can imagine how precisely we have to manufacture each of the large components never been done before. It is really a first of a kind and quality has to be at the highest level. So I guess we could leave on okay, the workers going on. Uh, we have a very strict schedule, is why we don't stop the work today, okay, just to uh, be sure that we are all aligned uh, on, on our schedule. Okay, so I propose to you, we move back and uh, we prepare for the ceremony. Django, are you? I hope that our worksite tour has given you a sense of the scale and complexity of the ITER project.
We will soon be starting the formal ceremony portion where we will hear from each of each or seven members. Now you notice that at times we talk about seven members or 35 countries. That is because Europe's membership is actually held through Euratom. That means that Europe represents both the work of the 27 countries of the European Union plus Switzerland plus the United Kingdom. Each of the seven members holds a seat on our oversight body, the ITER Council. Today we will hear from the leaders of each member as well as from the ITER Council chair. I mentioned earlier that the tokamak will be made up of more than one million components. And if you take individual parts, more than 10 million parts. These components are designed and fabricated in factories, laboratories, universities all over the world. When they arrive here, they will all need to fit together and they will need to be on time and according to our rigorous schedule. This is what adds complexity to the ITER project. But of course, it also adds a great value. The collaboration of all of these countries, each with unique expertise communing, uh, contributing to a single machine to a single goal. Let me point out one more contributor. ITER's parts are created in general by scientists and engineers. But one part, a bolt, just like the one I am holding here, was fabricated by an artist in New York, Christine Corday. Ms. Corday was inspired by the ITER project and proposed to contribute. She forged this 10 centimeter bolt and another one exactly like it, manufactured to the same precise material specification as the 40,000 other bolts that were inserted into the steel roof anchors of the Tokamak building. This one uh, inserted by Director General Bernard Bigot himself. Ms. Corday calls this work of art sans titre, or untitled, as a way of expressing how art and science often anonymously drive each other to create the best of our human dreams and aspirations. This bolt will be constantly watching over the plasma from where we placed her as a silent witness of the work of so many scientists, engineers, and workers to make ITER a success. You can read about this and hundreds of other stories that are unique to the ITER project on our public website, www.iter.org. We are now coming to the end of our worksite tour. I will leave you with a few images from our most recent drone videos as we prepare to start our formal celebration with President Emmanuel Macron and leaders from around the world starting at 11 a.m. France time.